the new revised curriculum is intended to rationalize color uh, to a very large extent. Color was introduced at a time when uh, we were in a pandemic in form of COVID-19. So it was introduced around 2020. And uh, in the majority of cases, uh, the teachers had not been trained to effectively manage color. And we, our observations were that uh, learners were doing more than 27 colors uh, at grade six and grade seven. So that had to be reviewed. And the new revised curriculum has reduced uh, the number of uh, learning areas per, per subject from around eight to one which means we are going to offer six learning areas to primary <coughs> students and uh, five compulsory learning areas for, for, from Form 1 up to Form 4. So which okay. means that uh, at grade seven, a student is only going to do six school-based projects. And we have removed the word color completely and replace it with the school-based project. So they will do a maximum of six instead of 27, a minimum of 27 that they used to do. And the one major point is that uh, the revised curriculum is very important in the sense that uh, we want to inculcate critical thinking skills in our students to embrace problem solving issues. Our students should be able to innovate, should identify societal problems vividly society, affecting society. Then they carry out their research or their project based on the problem that is faced by the community. And in the process, they are able to come up with the uh, goods and services that we need. Our emphasis is to ensure that we are going to vocationalize education. By the time a learner finishes all level, he or she must be able to provide goods and services that are needed. One should be able to have skills of making vehicles, skills of writing um, some plans, housing plans, and any living out of that. That is uh, uh, the main motive of this uh, uh, revised curriculum. And on the question asked by Tapata, capacitation of teachers, it is our aim to ensure that before we roll out this, uh, uh, this curriculum, it's, it becomes compulsory uh, for every teacher to go through in service training is a form of human capital development. We are able to, uh, to fulfill and also to realize some milestones because the teachers, they also need to go for in service training and in the process that will ensure that uh, the, the curriculum will be appreciated by teachers. And our emphasis is that uh, we want those teachers to embrace the new ways of teaching, the pedagogy and dragogy of teaching is to improve in line with the new curricula so that uh, they need to, to have scientific way of ensuring that the learners uh, receive some skills, competencies that are um, in line with uh, what we expect, in line with the national uh, vision of uh, Dr. E. Dean Nandawa, the uh, of National Development Strategy One, that will be realized through this new curriculum. I, I, I submit The nation is informed that the Heritage Best Education 2024 to 2030 curriculum framework is expected to transform the education system in order to produce citizens with the relevant skills applied knowledge, values, and dispositions 
that are key to national development, beginning with the communities they serve. The primary and secondary education system is being designed to mold productive learners who will cherish and practice Zimbabwean philosophical orientation of UNU Ubuntu. The proposed curriculum will embrace heritage as a basis for learning and infusing technology and shall be implemented from ECD up to upper secondary school level. The pathways whose learning areas are provided for in the framework are science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, visual and performing arts, humanities, especially the history of Zimbabwe, technical or vocational education and training, and commercials. Cabinet wishes to inform the nation that the heritage-based education will be anchored on the following pillars. A, programs or learning areas in terms of infrastructure. B, staffing infrastructure. C, physical and digital infrastructure. D, legal and regulatory infrastructure. And E, financial infrastructure. Pertinent issues in the learning programs Infrastructure include the rationalization of learning areas and strengthening the school-based continuous assessment. At infant level, which is ECDA to grade two, learning areas are being reduced from the previous 11 to six. The reduction will also apply to junior level, which is grade three to seven. At secondary school level, the core and compulsory learning areas are being reduced from seven to five, and an inclusive and integrated approach will be used to cater for learners with special needs, including through the provision of assistive devices. It is envisaged that the identification of pathways will be implemented early while list enrolling learners for secondary education in order to cater for differences in talent and ability. Learners at secondary school level will study at least three electives from the following categories. The sciences, languages, humanities, commercials, technical and vocational, and physical education and arts. The review of the assessment modalities and tools will entail the rationalization of CALA, which is the continuous assessment learning area. Activities now denoted as school-based projects, which emphasize on the learner being observed while carrying out the practical aspect at school. The future of the country will increasingly be shaped by science and technology, hence the bias in the education system to foster critical thinking, innovation, creativity, problem solving, and programming. As the learners enroll for secondary level, they are then categorized according to their areas of proficiency. Good and well-trained teachers are the cornerstone of any education system. Thus, central to the delivery of quality learning is the staffing infrastructure. This shall include capacitation of teachers since the heritage-based curriculum requires a different approach. Focus will be placed on in-service <coughs> teacher training and coaching while it's using locally available resources. The inquiry-based training and teaching approaches and methods pillar aims to transform teaching practices from the traditional role learning lecture and drill to more learner-centered approaches where pupils have the space to develop their creativity to develop and express their ideas and to collaborate with one another. And also at the same time to learn by doing 
thereby experience holistic development. Personnel qualified in technical and vocational programs will be considered for employment as teachers in relevant learning areas. This is expected to increase the absorption of post all level students in tertiary education institutions in the country and form the foundation of startups for the enterprising learners. Suitable and appropriate physical and digital infrastructure will be provided and closely related will be the provision of adequate and appropriate infrastructure, including classrooms, workshops, laboratories, internet connectivity, technical equipment, and teachers' houses in order to achieve the intended goals. The workshops and laboratories shall be tailor-made according to the unique geographical needs and locally available resources, which learners can observe, manipulate, and explore during their learning processes. Access to electricity either from the national grid or renewable sources of energy will be a priority for every school. This is in order to bridge the gap between the rural and urban schools. The focus will be more on learning by doing. <coughs> in order to actualize the aims of our education system, a review of the legal and regulations infrastructure will be undertaken. And this shall include the alignment of the heritage-based education curriculum with Section 13 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, which states that the state and all institutions and agencies of government at every level must endeavor to facilitate rapid and equitable development. Thus, policies and regulations will ensure that no place or individual is left behind as the curriculum is implemented. There will also be continuous harmonization of the primary and secondary education curriculum with the higher education curriculum. With the view of fulfilling the mantra of leaving no one and no place behind. The nation is informed that government will ensure that the provision of conducive teaching and learning infrastructure in rural areas, small scale commercial, old and new resettlement areas is provided. And the need analysis will also be conducted in all areas in order to guide the implementation matrix. This has got a bearing and a view in order to ensure a sustained transformation. The history of Zimbabwe will become a compulsory subject on the curriculum. National shrines and cultural heritage sites will be included throughout the curriculum and the national pledge will be included throughout the curriculum and have a special place in order to entrench patriotism, loyalty, and respect, and also to inculcate a proper mindset. Products of the education system should know that Zimbabwe comes first. The examination framework will be reviewed in order to cater for not just the academically gifted learners, but also for the technical and vocational oriented learners. The national e-learning strategy will be enhanced and the, the diasporans who are also part of the program will continuously support the program. Some of the areas that this program has already commenced is in Chipinke, Chiven, and districts. <laughs>